Okay, this is an algebra review worksheet. We're going to review the skill called completing the square, just to put it in perspective for you. This is one of many methods we have for solving a quadratic equation. Okay, factoring is probably our first go-to method. Factoring doesn't always work. So when a quadratic equation can't be factored, we could use the quadratic formula. That's a little bit of a long process. Completing the square is an alternative to that. Completing the square will always work because you're essentially making the equation into a perfect square trinomial. And I'll explain that more as we go through a couple examples. So let's take a look at the first one we're going to do is x squared plus 12x minus 64. I'm going to write down some steps and say them as I do them. So follow along. There are five steps on your paper that you can follow along with. First step is write the equation in the form x squared plus bx blank equals c. So I'm recognizing my c term is my negative 64 right here. And I essentially have to add that and get it on the other side. Remember, factoring, we always want it set equal to 0. This time I want it not set equal to 0. So that's essentially my first step, giving me, when I rewrite x squared plus 12x equals 64. Now, I intentionally left a blank there because we actually are going to fill that in with something, and that would be step two. I'm going to add something to the left-hand side of the equation. Now, I'm only allowed to do that if I add it to the right side of the equation. I'm allowed to add anything I want to any equation as long as I do it to both sides. So this is the part where we're going to make it. What we have on the left-hand side, we're essentially going to make be a perfect square trinomial. We're going to divide the b term. Recall the b term is what I have um, in front of my coefficient of x. I'm going to take the b term, and I'm going to divide it by 2, square it, and then add that to both sides. So I'm thinking right now. I'm going to go over here and think. I'm going to do b over 2 is 12 over 2, and I want to square that. So I'm essentially going to put right here, I like to think of that as 6 squared. And I know that 6 squared is 36, but I'm not going to write that. I'm going to write it as 6 squared, and I can simplify later if I need to. Okay? Step 3, write the left as a binomial square. So we're factoring the perfect square trinomial and simplify the right side. Clearly, the right side is the easier part of this, so we're going to go ahead and say that's 64 plus 36, which comes out to 100 when I add that. Left side, a little bit more complicated, so let's take a look. Left-hand side, I'm first going to go ahead and rewrite that as x squared plus 12x plus 36, and this is what we call the perfect square trinomial, my x squared plus 12x plus 36. What's that mean? Well, let's factor it, and we're going to find out. So going back to good old factoring, x times x gives me my x squared. Now I'm going to look at what can I multiply to get 36 such that I can add my middle terms and get 12. So the first things I'm thinking of are 6 and 6, but of course I have other numbers than that. I have 6 and 6, 12 and 3. I've got 18 and 2, probably some others that I'm not thinking of. 3 and 10. No, not 3 and 10. Let's get rid of that one. Bad math. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my 6 and 6. Try that. I need a positive right here, which means that I need a positive and positive or a negative and negative for my two signs. I'm going to try positive and positive because if I check my middle terms, I have 6x. I have another 6x. 6x plus 6x gives me my 12x in the middle. Now the whole idea of this is a perfect square trinomial, which is what we essentially have. right here, will always factor into the same two factors. So here you see that we have x plus 6 and x plus 6. So really, we can just go ahead and write that, if we want to, as x plus 6 quantity squared. And that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to really, once I get used to this, I'm going to skip these two steps right here. Because I don't need to write it out. Because isn't that 6 
what we ended up putting in this parentheses right here, and that's exactly why I like to write this term as 6 squared, not 12 over 2 squared, or not 36, even though I know it's 36. So just to tidy things up a little bit, I'm actually going to get rid of all of this. Of course, if you want to see that again, rewind the video. And let's tidy that up with my x plus 6 squared, 6 going right here, and now I have a binomial squared on the left-hand side equal to my right-hand side simplified to 100. Don't need that anymore either. And that was essentially my step 3 right there. That's the big one. Step 4, take the square root of both sides. We're now in the solving stage. And the advantage of what we just did is I can now take the square root of the left-hand side and the square root of the right-hand side, because I know that the square root of anything that's squared simplifies. When I get down on the left-hand side, I'm just going to have x plus 6. The square root and the square cancel each other out. And on the right-hand side, this one works out nice. Square root of 100 is 10. Be careful, be careful, be careful. You should be thinking something right now that I missed. When I insert a square root into a problem, what do I have to put in front of it? You're right, plus or minus. So I now have a positive or negative 10. You should vaguely remember from algebra class that whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you actually have two answers. And here's where your two answers come in. Because I really have two equations right now. So I'm going to rewrite. I've got x plus 6 equals 10. And I have x plus 6 equals negative 10. And this is just basic math right now. At, subtract 6 from both sides. So x equals 4 is one of your answers. And x equals negative 14 is your other answer there. That was the last part. Step 5, solve for x. Leave your answers in simplest radical form. This one I didn't have any radicals because my, my 100 was a perfect square. It came out as 10. Keep watching for example 2 if you want to see how to do it when you end up with something besides a perfect square inside your radical. Same process. Our answer is not going to be quite as tidy. So now we're looking at second example, x squared minus 14x plus 16, and we're going to follow the process. I'm going to go a little bit quicker this time. First thing I need to do is subtract my 16. So this is step one right here. Rewrite x squared minus 14x plus blank equals negative 16 plus blank. It's all set up. I'm going to complete the square by filling in the blank that will give me a perfect square trinomial or a binomial squared on the left from my perfect square trinomial. So I can say for sure that's going to be a minus because I have a negative sign right here. I'm jumping a little bit ahead. Now let's go back and let's fill in that term. So I'm filling in this term right here is going to be my b term divided by 2 squared. So I'm thinking negative 14 divided by 2 squared. And I like to write that as negative 7 squared. Now, I would recommend you put the parentheses, because if you actually multiply that out, you are going to get a positive 49. So be careful with, let's get rid of that box. It's kind of annoying. And let's go back to do the other side. So now I'm going to put on the other side, I have to add the same thing to the other side, negative 7 squared. Okay. Simplify from here. So the shortcut that I didn't do last time, the shortcut is that in my parentheses it's going to be x and this negative 7 is going to go right in there. But I already had, I'm sorry, take that out. I already have the negative sign right here. And then I've got the 7 there. So we don't have to put another negative. It's just x minus 7 quantity squared. If you're not sure if it's going to work, work out, take a quick second. Go over to the side of your paper and just test it. x minus 7 times x minus 7. And if you multiply those out, use the box method, FOIL, whatever you want to think of it as, you're going to end up with the trinomial x squared minus 14x plus 49 because we really have 49. On the right-hand side, simplifying that, I've got negative 16. We said this is a 49 plus 49. And let's go ahead and simplify that even further. I'm getting 33 when I do 49 minus 16. 
I'm on to step four, which is go ahead and solve, which means I need to take the square root of both sides, remembering to put a plus or minus in front of my square root when I insert it into the equation. Gives me a nice x minus 7 on the left equals positive or negative radical 33, which is not something that can be even simplified. I first check to see if I can if it's a perfect square, which is not. I can't even pull anything out of that. The only factors of 33 are 11 and 3, or 33 and 1. So it's stuck as it is. And in this case, I'm just going to have to go ahead and add 7 to both sides. And you're not going to like this answer. I'm going to like it. x equals 7 plus or minus radical 33 is your answer in simplest radical form. Now, if your teacher says to give you the approximate answers, then by all means, go ahead and type in your calculator, 7 plus radical 33, get a decimal, 7 minus radical 3, and get another decimal. If you want to write it twice, you can write it as x equals 7 plus radical 33, and x equals 7 minus radical 33. And that would be another way of expressing the same answer. Most people like to just keep it this way since we can express both of them by using the plus or minus and it's a little bit shorter. There you have two examples for completing the square, one that worked out um, to nice whole numbers and essentially would have been factorable. This one's one that would not have been factorable. You can see that by looking at the answers. So you can try some now on your own and hopefully feel more confident doing this.